Hello again. Thank you for joining us for this month's episode of the Perry Proud Show. We hope that you're following us on ComSouth Channel 100 as they are such a great partner of ours to keep you informed about things that are going on in Perry and the surrounding area. I also hope that you definitely have the weekend of April 8 and 9 on your calendar to be in downtown Perry and at the fairgrounds for all the exciting activities we have coming for the Dogwood Festival. It's always a great time to be in Perry and Middle Georgia and we hope that you plan to join us. Along those lines today I have with me a special guest. Miss Ellie Loudermilk, she is the president of the Perry Historical Society, and Ellie was so gracious to work with the Dogwood Festival this year to bring an exciting new event, and we are very, very pleased to introduce our first ever partnership with them, and I'm going to let Ellie kick it off and, and tell us the name of the event. It happens on April the 8th. Go ahead and put that on your calendar, and tell us, Ellie, what do you have special for the event? this year. Darlene, it is indeed exciting. I can hardly wait for this show to take place. It is a vintage tea and fashion show and the characters for the fashion show, the models, uh, are modeling um, people from Perry's past. There's going to be a sketch with each one of them, so we're going to hear lots of history. April the 8th, 3 o'clock, at the James E. World Center at Roser Park. Everybody is invited. It is a wonderful event. Tickets are $30. As a matter of fact, I have a copy of the ticket here. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm sure that we'll be sharing that uh, as this episode airs for you to make sure that you have information to attend this inaugural event and I love Ellie that it is not just the fashion show you mentioned sketches and I've had the pleasure of watching a vintage fashion show that Miss Ellie has put together and and let me tell you it will surprise you how entertaining it is so so tell us a little bit more about that you mentioned sketches and that it is about real characters from Perry's past before I do that though I would like to mention that the Perry players and the Perfect Pair are partners with the Perry Historical Wonderful. Society uh, to bring this event uh, during the Dogwood Festival. Um, could I share uh, with you one of the sketches that we will be doing that day? I think that would be awesome. Please do. Okay, the lady is Miss Elizabeth Short Chapman. It's entitled A Post-War Wedding, and um, the year is 1947. Okay. Elizabeth Short will be married in a couple of weeks down at the Methodist Church, and then she will be Mrs. Elizabeth Chapman. She will be wearing this waspy waist, young Hollywood original, fashioned as Christian Dior's new look in 1947 as she leaves on her honeymoon. The suit delicately displays the feminine body, and the A-line skirt has just made its debut during the war years. The tailored jacket with tails and bows adds just that perfect touch of formality to the overall look. Black hat, gloves, and shoes will accent this beautiful ensemble. And the strand of pearls is a wedding gift from her mother. You see, Elizabeth Short and Harris Chapman have waited long enough for this day. The war is over and their lives have returned to normal. After college, Elizabeth served in the Women's Army Corps along with her sister Marjorie, while Harris was serving in the Army, and there was no opportunity to marry sooner, or this day would have happened several years ago. Thank you, Elizabeth, for including us in your wedding plans. How exciting is that? And it's my understanding you do have that Christian Dior gown, and that's what will be displayed with that character. Absolutely. We... We have a character that is small enough to wear it (laughs) during this fashion show, so we're very excited about that. Yeah, wispy waist. What what a great um, memory, wispy waist. (laughs) It's a beautiful, beautiful suit, and it's obvious that there was a great deal of thought and money, you know, placed in this outfit, and she kept it for all these years. And how did you come about? How did Perry Historical Society come about? 
possessing those pieces of clothing. From her estate. Um, oh, wow. She died in 2014, and her family wanted those things that she considered precious to be kept uh, as precious and displayed. So we have it at the museum. Which brings up another vital point for our community. The museum here in Perry, um, which the Perry Historical Society obviously is, is supportive of and, and very much um, in staffing and in stocking. It is quite a wonderful place to visit. And you get visitors from all over the world, correct? Oh, thank you, Darlene. Yes, thank you for mentioning this. The museum is now six years old, and we have had visitors from uh, 42 of the states and 14 foreign countries now uh, wow. because we have a heritage room. So people are coming looking for their ancestry uh, as well as coming to view the museum. And in the museum, it's just a local history museum, but uh, I think it's one of the best I've ever seen. It's themed. Uh, every room has a story. Uh, every article in there has a story, and it, I think it's the stories that people have come to see and mm -hmm. hear. Mm -hmm. So we are just delighted. Yes, it is sponsored by the Perry Area Historical Society. That is one of their projects. Um, there are other projects. We have uh, Spring Hill School right. uh, that we use for events. As a matter of fact, the student of the quarter, yes. um, is um, the students are awarded there. Uh, in Spring Hill School, and we have events for the community there, and the Historical Society meets there regularly. But the Historical Society also gives tours, uh, sometimes private tours, sometimes public tours. We have uh, two, two such tours coming up the end of April uh, and, and May for um, um, National Preservation Month. Wonderful. So um, we give those for the city, but we also will have one coming up in two weeks for the Adaka Club. It will just be a walk down Carroll Street, remembering what businesses were here over different periods of time. And we just really enjoy doing that. Well, I hope that you can gather that our Perry Area Historical Society is not sitting back on their laurels. They're very active. They do provide wonderful tram tours, which I've had the pleasure. When I first came to town, that was one of the first things I did. And Ellie does a fantastic job, not just pointing out buildings and telling their history, but telling the history of the people that were in that building, bringing those to life for our whole community. So I encourage you to reach out to the historical Historical Society, visit the museum. Though we are talking and very excited about the event on April the 8th, again, that is at 3 p.m. at the Worrell Center at Rosier Park. Please get that on your calendar. Call the Historical Society very quickly. We'll have that number on this broadcast for you to follow. Get those tickets because I'm certain it will be a huge success. But before that time, after that time, become an active member of the museum and the historical society here in Perry and make sure that we keep those things alive for our future generations. It's, it's, we've all known this. We've, we've been taught in school that you cannot know where you're going unless you remember from where you come. And those words are never better brought to life than what you and the, and the ladies and the gentlemen do with our museum. And, and I want to thank you on behalf of the chamber and our board for the important role that you have played in our community. And, and we see it threaded through. Again, you mentioned the chamber holds our student of the quarter presentations at Spring Hill. And it's such a lovely reminder of our history here in Perry. So thank you, Ellie, for those efforts. Oh, you're welcome. You know I love it. No, this I do it from my heart. I feel so strongly that the history of the community needs to be remembered. And if I could just use one word Please. to convey what, uh, what I feel like our mission is, it is connection. We see people connected to family members, to old classmates, to their ancestors, um, to new friends. Uh, That's just fantastic. So I just feel like we have such, a, such an important mission in this community. 
I love that you use that word because we promote the Dogwood Festival as the time that our neighbors, our citizens, get back out and reconnect with neighbors. You know, we've been kind of closed up for cold winter, not so cold this past winter, you know. <laughs> but, um, typically, it is springtime. It is time of new birth and rebirth and excitement. And, and you're correct, connecting people now with the people from whom we come and Perry, as you all know, has a deep, deep, rich history yes. politically, in the state. I mean, many, many important things have happened in and around Perry. As a matter of fact, we're about to conclude 200 years, a lot of history. And if I might mention some, of, uh, some of the things that Perry is renowned for, and every day or every week we find new items uh, that we're renowned for, but the things that are, you know, that have struck me from the very beginning as worthy of mentioning and remembering is the fact that we have been extremely active in the political world. Yes. We have, um, you know, we have, we have uh, birthed 17, no, make that 18, state senators. Wow. And 47 state representatives. That um, is amazing numbers. But we've also birthed two governors. A lot of people don't really realize that. But Sonny Perdue was born right here on this street. And then James Oliver was the first governor for the Virgin Islands after World War I. And he, too, was from this community. But we also have Courtney, uh, General Courtney Hodges mm -hmm. you know, from World War II. Uh, we have had uh, a Miss Georgia. We've had a Miss Georgia Peach. Wow. We've had a Miss Georgia Watermelon. And the list goes on and on and on. And I'm sure these are lists that you can understand further when you visit our museum Absolutely. here in Perry. And that is located in the sweet, sweet little yellow house right behind the Houston County Library, Perry Branch. And we are hopeful that you will find your way there. And make sure you sign up and, and even join them as a... Um, sponsor. They need your help to keep those efforts going here in Perry. Well, Ellie, thank you again for joining me. I want to make sure, again, our focus today is the Vintage Fashion Show and Tea, which will be held Saturday, April the 8th, 3 p.m., Worrell Center, Rosier Park. Call the Historical Society or call the Chamber. We can get you in touch with Ellie on how to get your tickets. And it is a partnership with the Perry Area Historical Society, the Perfect Pair, and the Perry Players. And it's always wonderful, again, that theme of connections, yes. that we can bring all these very important community leaders together. And it is the privilege of the Perry Chamber to, to even just be able to Right on your coattails with an event like this. <laughs> well, thank you for hosting me today. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Perry Historical Society. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about some more features of the Dogwood and also some of those upcoming opportunities to honor some of our military heritage in the next few months. Hello, I'm Darlene McLendon, President and CEO of the Perry Area Chamber of Commerce. I invite you to join me on Channel 100 Come South for our monthly Perry Proud Show. This show is about you, your community, some of the great things happening in it, and the information that you need to get the most out of living here in Perry, Houston County, and our surrounding communities. Again, it's on Channel 100, Calm South, and I do hope that you find your way to join us either on a Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday, 10.30 a.m. or 8 p.m. Again, we hope that we bring you many, many reasons that you are Perry Proud. Welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about Ellie's plans for the Vintage Fashion Show and Tea on April the 8th. It's going to be a great, great entertaining event. I promise you, you won't make that on your calendar, 3 p.m. Don't forget. Now, I know this looks a little bit different than we normally have our setting for crowded. our little Perry <laughs> Proud Show here, but this is an example of what our office has been like in the lap for the last four to six months. Yes. 
Bonnie Giles, no stranger to Perry Proud, no stranger to the Perry community. Our events and communication director at the Perry Chamber of Commerce has been busy, busy, busy making sure that this year's festival, the 29th annual Dogwood Festival here in Perry, is new and exciting and has got some great, great new vendors that we're excited about introducing to you the Perry community. So, Bonnie, let's just kind of dive right in here. Where do you want to start? You want to start with our t-shirt? You want to start with our vendors? Let's start with the t-shirt. I like that. I like that. Look how beautiful it, it turned out this year. I love it on this yellow. It pops with the blue. Tell us about the artist, Bonnie. Our artist here is Miss Beverly Ussery, and she is one of our local art teachers at the Perry Art Center. So people can go and take classes from her, and she used to teach at Perry High. So Miss Beverly did that for us. What a wonderful, wonderful job she did this year, and I hope that you'll get your T-shirt. We have people that collect them from every year. I'm not sure if they have 29 of them yet. but um, <laughs> I do. And, you do you, do you? And we love how it had an eclectic um, compilation of all the aspects of our festival, the hot air balloons, it takes place at the fairgrounds, the dogs jumping with Ultimate Air Dogs, yes. obviously Dogwoods, because we're the Dogwood Festival, yes. and she did such a great job, and, and please, when you purchase these t-shirts, make note of the t-shirt sponsors that are listed below the artwork. They are a huge part of the they success of, of that part of our festival as well. So um, great job, great job. Um, tell us about some of our unique vendors that you, you have been able to book for us this year. I know that we have some interesting new things for the guys that want to come on out to an yes, arts and crafts festival. Um, we've got... Cole's Corner. Now, I know that might not tell you a whole lot about what that's for, but um, this isn't just for the guys. This is kind of like cross-gender barrier, but they, they've got some beautiful Americana photos. Yes, they are gorgeous. They are. They are. And they're going to, it's cross-generational. They've got some Volkswagen vans. Now, how many remember Volkswagen vans? <laughs> I, I took many church trips in, in Volkswagen vans because you could pile a bunch of people <laughs> in. That was before seatbelt laws, you know. We'd have really good time, but um, they've got historical um, sites and homes and and the way they do their photography is they are beautiful and I'm just so happy to have her she's actually a lady who does that so oh. um, yeah they kind of look more like something a guy would do but um, it's a lady and she's very new and we're excited to have her that is exciting that is exciting we also this probably more so for the guys but I don't want to get any calls and, and letters <laughs> to the chamber I know we have a lot of females that hunt yeah Yes. You know, um, I tried that when I was little. I didn't like getting up really early. <laughs> but we have Critter Getter. Yeah, and they're brand new this time, this year, too. Critter Getters. And they are handmade um, calls. So duck calls. Duck calls and... Pig what, calls and, and turkey <laughs> calls. And I don't know. Call your children in for dinner, you yeah, know? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe we can make that happen. Uh -huh. So, um, Tell us about some of the food that's coming in this year. Oh, we have a lot of the good food we've always had. We have the Greek vendor coming back that has the euros mm -hmm. and mm -mm. all the, the Greek salad and all the different stuff that he has. And then we also have Jason Bivens coming back with... Jay's smoking barbecue. So, oh, um, he's a local love favorite. Him. Yeah. Everyone loves him. And then we also have um, Country Cabin Sweets. So everybody loves that big red trailer with all the, what is it, the ice cream that you have? Ice cream. Uh, yes, they have the best chocolate ice cream. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you, it <laughs> is worth standing in line for. That is for sure. Well, it's very exciting. I know that we did get a very unique um, plant vendor this year, Le Jardin Cottage, and that's about <laughs> as French as I can speak. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> but they're cute little glass globes with little scenes in them. Yeah, and, and they have plants in them, little little gardens, I guess. Little micro gardens, and how, how pleasurable would that be to, to sit on your desk and look at oh, and, yeah. and remember? Oh, that? oh well... 
guest <laughs> list and wish list have, have begun at the Chamber of Commerce and um, some other unique vendors. What do you have to share with us? Well, um, we do have a lot of the, um, the ones we've had coming back, and we're really excited about that because if they don't have a good time, they're not going to come back. So That's we're really true. glad they're coming back. Um, since our festival is all about the dogs and the dogwood and the ultimate air dogs, um, we do have several vendors that sell um, things for dogs. So we're excited to have them back. Kind of a perfect fit, don't uh-huh, you think? Yeah. And um, new this year, actually, Canine Clubhouse is hosting a couple tents for you to come and adopt a pet. Oh, that's fantastic. So excited uh-huh. that we can help bridge a need. Uh-huh. with uh, someone that can help meet that need and bring pleasure to a family. Mm-hmm. That's that's a great community connection yeah. for the festival. Yeah, and several local res- rescue groups will be there with their animals that are adoptable. Um, I think they're just bringing puppies and dogs, so I don't think they're bringing the kitty cats out, but if they do, you better keep me away. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, wish this is getting one. I'm not providing cats for anybody. <laughs> I have to keep my own husband uh, away from yeah, that. We can't do that. Yeah. Um, we also have um, one of our local merchants is coming. Has bought a booth space in front of her building. Her, she's bringing her stuff out. So two of a kind art, and she makes those beautiful dogwood hangers um, to put on the front of her building. How wonderful is that? Mm-hmm. And, and that's a great foresight of her to realize that certainly she can be open the whole festival time. Oh, yes, yes. Um, and we so very much appreciate our downtown businesses do. to partner with us to bring this once a year event into our community. The economic impact, the tourism impact is just it's incredible. And we know that it's a partnership with all of our businesses downtown that they open up their doors. And if they want, they can even rent the space right in front of them to have an extended um, version of their business and, and they can welcome come people on out in. in the streets. Yeah. That's and right. Gentry's, I know, will have their ice cream. Everybody, every dog would. Gentry's downtown market is full of people. Um, yes, they are. And a lot of the other businesses, um, they get a lot of traffic through their stores. So. Absolutely. It's a great time to be in Perry, April 8th and 9th this year, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. on yes. Saturday the 8th. And Sunday, 12 till 5. So, And then on Saturday, head on out to the Balloon Glow from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. That's at the West gate of the fairgrounds and we've got a special special event this year with that we have weekend getaway for our band and i'm talking about brass instruments Mm -hmm. i mean family fun dancing you're gonna gonna yeah you've gone away to the beach yeah it's it's big band sound lots and lots and lots of fun we're so very excited to Constantly push and improve, push and improve. Um, this is your festival. Please come out and make it part of your weekend here in Perry and work with the chamber if you'd like to volunteer. We have lots and lots we of time do. for you to volunteer <laughs> as well. Um, wrapping it up, Bonnie, I know that we've got some, some good things coming in the next few months. Um, segwaying from this is our 29th festival yes next next year year will be our 30th and i am so excited well tell me about tell our viewers about something special that has been created to commemorate the 30th um festival with with our our artwork artwork. please um for our 30th festival we are going to have a contest um to see who can create artwork um for our 30th year So um, that artwork is used on the back of the t-shirt. It's also used for our poster. Um, Really, it's the main theme besides our logo for the whole festival. Um, It is. So we are going to be putting out a contest um, with rules and and different things that we want to see on the art. But um, we would love for someone local to win that. That will be an fantastic opportunity to highlight our local talent and it is enormous here in Perry. It would just probably oh, yes. shock and amaze yes. most people. 
And like Bonnie a lot said, of very talented people. It'll be on the T-shirt. It's on the front of the brochure, which we print ten thousand or more each year and spread all across the state, all across the area. And it will also be in our posters. It's basically the pretty invitation to the festival each year. And real quick, before we wrap it up, we've got an event coming up on Sunday, June 25th. That is our Independence Parade and Freedom Fireworks. So it is not too soon that we start the process for selecting our Grand Marshal. Yes, and we are. We have the applications re ready to go out for that. Um, and so they'll be going out, look for them in the next couple of weeks, probably by the time this airs. They'll be out. Look on the festival website, call, I'm sorry, look on the chamber website, call the chamber, make sure you have the opportunity to nominate a Houston County veteran to be the Grand Marshal in the parade here in Perry. We are the only Independence Parade in the county. We kick off a week-long fest, um, week of celebration here in Houston County, and it is certainly our pleasure to bring that to you. And our parade will be followed by the fireworks out yes. at the fairgrounds. We grew it a little bit bigger last year, had great reviews, and we're excited about yes. bringing that back. So lots of good things coming to you here in Perry and the area surrounding us. We hope that you join us and always be Perry proud.